And now for the moment you've been waiting all term for. Welcome to our last video in the series. That is, unless you email me and request more. It will be on transfer pricing, topic three, market-based and cost-based transfer prices. All right, so when performing market-based and cost-based transfer pricing, it is useful to employ a general rule regarding the minimum transfer price. So in general, as we alluded to in the previous video, the minimum transfer price for division should be the variable costs up to the point of transfer plus opportunity costs. Okay, so we know what this is. Those are the costs incurred. And then opportunity cost. Let's revisit that for a moment. So opportunity cost is the second best alternative, the best foregone option, the one that we didn't go with. So if here, the option that we are going with is transferring it internally, hence we're, we're looking at transfer pricing methods, then um, by definition, the second best option, the first best foregone option, uh, would typically mean selling externally. Okay, so what happens when you sell it externally is you would get market price or else, you know, that's the price in which two people agree. And there may be costs associated with selling it externally. So your opportunity cost would be what you can sell it for externally, less any um, cost to sell, so any, I don't know, commissions, uh, and then less the cost to produce, which would be your variable costs. So oftentimes we see um, this variable costs <laughs> really um, equaling our market price less maybe any commissions to be sold. So oftentimes, if you are operating at capacity, that means you have no excess capacity, no just goods lying around, you would probably, um, it is possible to have your transfer pricing min and max at the same price, in which case you would just transfer it to another division at the market price, or perhaps the market price less uh, selling costs, meaning less any special commissions. Uh, it really just depends on the case facts, and it just depends in industry where you're at. Okay, so those are some things to keep in mind. And here I briefly mentioned the maximum transfer price. You cannot, you cannot sell it uh, internally to another division for more than they can purchase uh, from an external company. So that's because overall your company would lose money. Think about it. You have division A and division B. And division A decides they want to sell to division B or transfer it for above what division B could buy it from uh, a third party out in the market. So what's going to happen? Division B is like, uh-uh, I'm not paying more. <laughs> so they'll go out and buy those goods and then bring them in and continue on with their merry way. In which case, you've now introduced business risk. So, <laughs> you know, who's, who's company A going to sell for? Um, and are they really going to sell it and be able to, you know, get them out to other consumers? Well, I don't know, probably not. Or else whoever company B purchased them from would just be doing that. So... I don't know, unless you find this really neat arbitrage opportunity where you can buy, you can sell it for above market price to somebody else, uh, Division A, and then um, somehow make a profit between that spread. Guys, just the maximum transfer price is the market price. Do not introduce additional business risk. That is, <laughs> you know, not being able to keep your business sustained, not being able to maximize your profits. Do not introduce additional business risk by creating a transfer price above market price. Okay, circling back and more on cost-based transfer pricing. We previously discussed that cost-based transfer prices are typically one of variable costs, variable and fixed costs, perhaps full absorption cost, or any of the above with a markup applied. So if a cost center is below capacity, we would tend to do variable cost of production. That is, what is the next incremental um, unit produced going to cost? Because if we are below capacity, it means that we are, we are in cost recovery mode and that is our, going to be our new floor. However, if it is at capacity, we want to make sure that we are um, we are having all of our costs covered, um, including um, all of our, our fixed costs, because really we're at capacity. So if there was a, um, a third party out there, another market, then uh, we would be selling. Um, we, yeah, we can just get rid of all of our items. So our output equals our, 
our demand. So in which case we have full opportunity cost uh, if we are going to be transferring it internally and therefore need to use full absorption cost. So cost-based transfer prices, these are commonly used when there is no market rate available or the rate is excessively costly to obtain. The, there's a significant downside though of cost-based selling prices is that they can they may lead to suboptimal decision making if the wrong cost base is selected. So if the items I just discussed on the prior two slides um, are violated, uh, such as when uh, a selling division is operating below capacity, um, but the buying division procures goods from an external supplier, that would be a significant downside in which uh, this led to a suboptimal decision making that would overall hurt the entire organization. So when each manager for each division is acting in their own best interest because they use uh, because the tra uh, because they use the wrong transfer price, meaning they they could have just recovered their variable costs and had $1 more and they'd still be making off more money than just sitting around letting their excess capacity build up. Um, yeah, so making sure that we know the cost inputs, we know what level our production's at, and we can be flexible and ensure that we go back and forth, or not go back and forth, but we can really pick out the most appropriate cost base given the case facts, given the company and their situation. All right, so market-based transfer prices are based on external market conditions or prices charged to external customers. They are often appropriate for relationships where the selling division is a profit center and already has external customers available to sell to. Further, market-based transfer prices are typically best when there are interdependencies between the operating units, uh, which are minimal. There are no incremental costs or benefits to using an external provider. And the external market is perfectly competitive and pricing information is easily available. An example we typically think of here would be a commodity. So there's a market um, and <laughs> there's really no product differentiation. Uh, you know, maybe it is uh, timber. You know, two by four of timber is a two by four of timber is a two by four of timber. Another example of a commodity would have been what we saw in the previous video when we discussed about oil. So a bucket of oil is a bucket of oil is a bucket of oil if we're talking about the same uh, type. All right, let's look at a question. Acme is a corporation that manufactures radio parts that are used in radio receivers. There are two divisions, machining and assembly. The machining department creates highly specialized pieces that are then assembled into a part by the assembly department that is ultimately sold to a company that assembles the full radio receiver. Whew. Currently, the machining department is below capacity and management is reviewing the transfer price between the units. The machining department has no external customers and the goods produced are highly specialized. The transfer price that would be the most appropriate is likely A, variable cost, B, market-based, C, negotiated, or D, full cost full absorption cost? The answer is A. The machining department has no external customers and appears to be a cost center. It also appears that a market quote for a price of the produced good would be difficult to find. As a result, a cost-based price is most suitable. And since the division is operating below capacity, variable cost is most appropriate. Okay, so my suggestion now is to update your mind map so that you can see what are the pros and cons, what are kind of the lower limits, the upper limits, and the options in between. And then I would go and watch, pardon me, I would go and attempt the tutorial questions and then watch the videos, the video tutorials to kind of fill in the gaps while updating your mind map as you go through. Alrighty. I sincerely, sincerely enjoyed working with you. I sincerely, I loved your emails. I loved your comments. And uh, yeah, you know, it's been my absolute pleasure. And I look forward to seeing you in your next accounting course.